Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. I want to invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. We're looking at the third beatitude, the third of eight. Jesus begins the Sermon on the Mount that extends through chapter 7. So starts in chapter 5. And it begins this, this sermon with these eight characteristics of the blessed life. Like it's not a question, do you want the blessed life? Do you want the blessings of God? We all want the blessings of God. But the real question is, how do we get it? How do we get it? And I really believe that it's before us right here. Jesus tells us. If you want to, hear this. Martin Lloyd-Jones, as you're finding Matthew 5. Martin Lloyd-Jones says, a man can never be meek unless he is poor in spirit. A man can never be meek unless he has seen himself as a vile sinner. These other things must come first. And we spent the past two weeks looking at the first two characteristics, poor in spirit, poor in spirit, and then those who mourn. And today, uh, it's humility, or it's meekness, or it's gentleness. But Jesus begins this series of these eight characteristics, talking about blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Uh, and as we looked at in part one, it's those who realize their desperate need for the Lord. Those who realize that, man, we're really just... Hold the position of beggars. That's all we are. Like everything that we have is a gift from God. And we need to acknowledge that. That apart from him, Jesus said, we can do nothing. We desperately need him, even on our very best days. You know what I'm talking about? Those very best days. You're like, man, everything is going smooth. <laughs> you know, like nothing can stop me. Have you ever thought that or said that? How, uh, Seek humility really quick uh, because there's something coming. <laughs> but even on those really good days, like that's our position. God, I desperately need you. Acts is described so well. In him, we live, move, and exist. In him, we have our being. So like, who would we be apart from him? What would we have apart from him? And the answer is simply nothing. That's why you came this morning. That's encouraging, but that's how it starts. That's the beginning of these eight characteristics, the desperation. God, I'm desperate for you. And then part two, we looked at mourning our sin, grieving over our sin, the realization that I am a sinner. Jesus, you are the savior. I love the words of all oh, hail King Jesus surrendered everything over to him. Like in him, there is no life. In him, there is death. In him, there is separation. In him, there's only damnation to hell. That's all bad news, but there's good news in Christ Jesus. There's victory in Christ Jesus. There's forgiveness of sins in Christ Jesus. There's a living hope in Christ Jesus. There's a heavenly hope in Christ Jesus. There is life in Christ Jesus. And, and so Jesus shares this second beatitude, this second characteristic of the blessed life. Blessed are those who mourn over their sin. Mourn over the death of their sin. For they will be comforted. There is indeed comfort in Christ Jesus. For those who are in Christ Jesus. And so the third characteristic. Part three. Hope you're ready. Blessed. Blessed are the humble. Blessed are the humble. For they will inherit the earth. Now the Greek word for this word humble is Praus, P-R-A-U-S. Say it however you want. Say it however you want. Just don't judge me. And, and so the literal translation of this word humble is meek or gentle. Meek or gentle. And so I want to say this from the very beginning, that meekness is not, you know what's coming, weakness. Meekness is not weakness. We live in a world that, oh man, those that are meek are the weak. No, that, that's completely counterculture. And it's different from what Jesus is even teaching as the disciples gather around him, as the crowds begin to gather around him, and he teaches, bless are the humble. Wait, but, but that's not what I'm taught. That's not what I grow up in, especially here in America. You want to you wanna do something with your life. You got to knock some people out of the way, you know. <laughs> 
And, and so oftentimes, meekness is viewed as weak, but not, not with Jesus, and not the way of Jesus. Meekness is not weakness for both Moses and Jesus were meek men. And we know that these two men were not pushovers. I mean, consider Moses for a moment. Here's a man. He's running from God. God says, hey, I'm going to use you to, 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 free, to free the Israelites. You're going to go stand before Pharaoh. And Moses is like, no, nah, there's got to be somebody else. My speech isn't good. My, I'm old. Like, he throws all the excuses. You, you remember the last time God told you to do something? You're like, ah, I don't know. And then we sit here and question. And ultimately, we come to our senses. And it's like, God, your way is better, right? Your, your way is better. So I'm just going to do what you say. And, but, but it's like this repetitive nature. Well, Moses finds himself there. He eventually goes and stands before Pharaoh, the most powerful uh, 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 ruler. People had been in bondage and slavery. And uh, Pharaoh's like, no, nah, I'm not letting him go. And he goes back and back and back and back. I mean, this would have taken some boldness to be able to stand before Pharaoh, knowing that it could have meant death for him. But he continues to go. Then God changes Pharaoh's heart. The people are released. And then you know what's next? As they, as they make this journey through the wilderness, uh, you would think, you would think that uh, they would be celebrating and they would be joyous, a joyous people and a people of gratitude and trusting God for every provision, but it's not so. Uh, so not much has changed over throughout the history, right? <laughs> it's, it's kind of the similar for me and you. And, and so for 40 years, Moses deals with this. I mean, it's, it just mind-blowing to me for 40 years. Here's a man of boldness, though, to continue to turn the people back to the Lord. He's not a, he's not a pushover. In fact, Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, would you write that reference down? Numbers 12, verse 3 says this, Moses was a very humble man, more so than anyone on the face of the earth. Moses, this Moses that we just talked about, the Moses that we read about in the scriptures, he was a humble man. He was a humble man. Jesus was not a pushover. Jesus was a, was a meek, strong man. Do you recall that time in the temple where uh, there were people set up shop trying to rip the people, the worshipers off? I mean, that's really what's happening in that temple, that moment. Jesus just doesn't come in and start throwing tables. He comes in, he assesses the situation. He sees that there are people that are ripping worshipers off and then he throws tables. <laughs> Jesus wasn't a pushover. Jesus was a meek, strong man. The word translated meek uh, is, was used by the Greeks to describe a horse that had been broken. A horse that had been broken. I mean, I don't know the last time you rode a horse or the last time you stood by a horse or the last time you fed a horse. Um, the fair has like three more hours left starting at 12. I, mean, I guess you could get close to one if, if you're looking. And, uh, and so... But there's something, something amazing about it, how strong this animal is, but yet how tame. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm often intrigued. I see like little children riding on this, this, this massively strong horse that at any moment could like kill us, you know? And, but but this, is the, this is where this Greek word comes from. And it's important to know that strength under control, power under control, and in your own right, in my own right, there are strengths within us. There are people that we could smash to the ground, right? But, but it's power under control. Even in the context of marriage, how you speak to your spouse, it's power under con control. Man, man, I met with some couples that they've like tried to see who, who can be the loudest here. And, and, and that's, not, that's not the way, by the way. <laughs> but it's, it's power under control. And it takes takes this word meekness that we're talking about here today. And Jesus is referring to meekness. Meekness is strength under control. Uh, meekness means many things, but I would share three today with us. Meekness first means non-retaliation. I'm just coming out of the gate hot with this one. Meekness means non-retaliation in a world where it, it, it seems to be a part of us or, or the brokenness of this world that it's within us instinctively to retaliate. Like someone does something wrong to you, man, you want to do something wrong back to them. But again, that's not the way of Jesus. That's not a way of kingdom living. Meekness means non-retaliation. In Jesus' culture, 
They operated in this eye for eye mindset. If someone were to wrong you, you'd wrong them. The problem was that retaliation is a never ending cycle. It's a never ending cycle. And so Jesus is teaching. He's teaching a different way. He's teaching a different way of, of, of living. Yesterday, we went to the fair. My wife sang the national anthem for uh, the goat show. She's made, she's made the, herself to the goat show. Uh, praise, nah, she, she's, she's incredible, but, uh, and then we sang, she sang for the, uh, we sang, she sang for the derby, uh, the demolition derby, we had a couple people, part of Discovery involved in that, that, that was cool, and, uh, but before she sang the national anthem, she was talking with whoever, getting set up, and, and I go and sit down on, like, the only spot, because if you've ever been to the derby, you know they need, like, a thousand more seats, uh, whoever's in charge of that committee, and so, uh, so I sit down on this one seat because there's this big old blanket like covering all these seats. And so I make sure I don't sit on the blanket. You know, I sit on this one seat and uh, Audra comes over. I said, here, and I start to scoot the blanket over. I said, just, just sit here. We'll get up when, uh, when somebody comes. And, and then this person from the back chimes in. That's been here three hours. So I'm like, oh yeah, you're good. You're good. And so Audra, we, I had her talked into sitting down, scooting over the blanket. And about that time she sat down. Would you believe that the person the blanket person came. And if you're watching, God bless you. And so, and, and so this, I, I'm just sitting here, by the way, just eating my annual uh, cheese fries. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, that's, that's my annual thing. I'm just sitting here minding my own business, just trying to eat some cheese fries on the bench. And uh, this lady comes in and she immediately loses it. I mean, loses it. And I immediately get up with my cheese fries and walk the other way. Because I'm like, no, not today, Satan. Not, to, not today. Especially after I've already seen like 15, 20 people from Discovery. Like, no, nah, pastor can't lose it on this lady that's screaming and cussing. I mean, she lost it over a blanket. And I apologized as I ran away with my cheese fries. And... <laughs> Praise God, I got it right that night. Uh, meekness is non-retaliation. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Would you write that reference down? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, all of you be like-minded and sympathetic. Love one another and be compassionate and humble. Do you, do you hear the call for the church? This is the call for the church. To be like-minded. Like we're, we're agreeing together. To be sympathetic. When was the last time you saw someone in need and, and your heart just broke or, or your heart was cold on the other side? We're called to be sympathetic. We're, we're called to be loving and, 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 and compassionate. And, and you see that word? Humble. Humble. And, and why all of that is so important? Look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, Not paying back evil for evil or insult for insult, but on the contrary, giving a blessing since you were called for this so that you may inherit a blessing. You see, Jesus's way is different. Kingdom living is different. Jesus's kingdom living is, is different. The old person, the old man is like, no way. I'm going to give that insult because they just insulted me. But what does Jesus say? No, give a blessing. Give a blessing. There are moments in your life in my life, that we, we, we got to pick up our cheese fries and walk the other way. You know what I'm saying? Calm, we got to calm down because the insult would, it would be easy to give the insult for the insult rather than the blessing. But how might they know that we are his apart from that blessing? Our response must be different than the response of the world. Meekness is learning to agree, uh, to disagree agreeably. I want you to hear that today. We got a lot of different views, a lot of different opinions, a lot of different perspectives. And I just want to humbly say that none of us are right in all of them. <laughs> uh, there's only one uh, viewpoint that is right, accurate, and the authority, and it's this living word of God. It's the standard. Just because I have a thought in my mind doesn't mean, doesn't make it right. It doesn't, doesn't mean everybody else should go with it. But, but meekness is learning to disagree agreeably. Socrates, uh, ancient philosopher, he described meek as the person who can argue tellingly a matter of utmost importance to him, yet does so without losing his temper. Remember that last heated conversation you had, that heated debate? It's, it's a gauge of, is meekness alive in me or not? 
if we're able to have this conversation without our face turning red and our, and, and our, and our voice being raised and all the veins popping out, you know what I'm saying? You've been there and, and there, there's a difference. There's a difference. Can we sit down and have this conversation? And even when we need to agree to disagree, and so love that person through it. John Gill says, meek people, don't envy, don't retaliate, and exercise patience in the face of adversity. Again, meek people don't envy, don't retaliate, and exercise patience in the face of adversity. Meekness is the ability to handle a hurt without retaliating. Again, the old person, it's all about retaliation. I'm going to fix this. And this is how we process the hurt. It's by hurting. But Jesus said, hey, will you bring that hurt to me? Will you allow me to heal this, this hurt? And I guarantee you, his way is better. And he wants to heal whatever the hurt is that lives in you. With an oppressor like Rome ruling over Israel, the disciples wanted to do the opposite of gentleness. We're going back to the context of Matthew 5 as Jesus gathers the disciples and as the crowds get closer to listen. They, they, they wanted to rebel, to crush Rome. They thought Jesus was the right man for the job. But Jesus preaches a different message. The bloodthirsty and revenge-seeking don't receive the earth. The meek do. The meek do. Meekness means non-retaliation. Secondly, would you write this down? Meekness, meekness means thankfulness. Meekness means thankfulness. Thankfulness. We ought to be uh, thankful for the gifts God has given us. All that we have is a gift from God when we truly take a step back and consider this life. People of the world uh, want more and more and are envious of what others have. You and I, uh, from time to time, I'm sure have fallen into to that trap. But followers, followers of Jesus are, are content. They, live to, they learn to be content be thankful with the gifts God has given and choose to honor the Lord with them. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26. Would you write that reference down? Galatians 5, 26 says, Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Let us not become conceited, puffed up, provoking one another, envying one another. James chapter 3, verse 16 says, For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is disorder in every evil practice where there is envy and selfish ambition there is disorder and every evil practice but the wisdom from above is first pure then peace loving gentle compliant full of mercy and good fruits unwavering without pretense the wisdom from above do you, do you see this is pure it's peace loving. It's gentle. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Give thanks in everything. Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If you find yourself today trying to figure out what is God's will for my life, you're trying to make this decision and you just don't know, can I encourage you today to stop and be thankful? to pause, to count the many blessings of God in your life, to practice gratitude. When was the last time you just took a step back and thanked God for how good he is, for how merciful he is, for his grace, for his provision? We need to be people of, of gratitude. How do we fight against envy? We practice gratitude. Be thankful. Meekness means thankfulness. Meekness means joy. No matter how difficult the circumstance that you find yourself in today, a meek person will find joy in knowing that the Lord has a plan for his or her life. Meekness means joy. 
Philippians chapter 4, Paul is in a prison cell and he's writing to the church in Philippi. Let that sink in just for a moment. Here's a man who is in prison, behind the bars, not free, writing to a free people. Yes, they're facing persecution, but they're not in a prison cell, at least yet in this moment. They're free people. Paul finds himself in one of the darkest, most loneliest places that one can find themselves. And listen to what he says in chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. How, how can he hold that position? How can he hold that position? Through meekness. Paul. Paul can hold that position of joy. He can rejoice and he can encourage the, the people to re rejoice. And then he says this in verse 5. Let your graciousness be known to everyone that the Lord is near. I wonder what does the lost world see in us? What do they see in the church? I pray. I pray that they see meekness. I, I pray that they see joy. I pray that they see the grace that has been extended to us. Who are we to not extend it to others when God has extended it to us? How do we become meek? We trust that God will handle the enemies who attack us. And we exercise gratitude and joy in all circumstances. Listen, church, revenge belongs to God. Revenge belongs to God. The enemy would love for you to be caught up in plotting and planning revenge. But can I tell you today that that would be a waste of this life. Choose to trust that God will meet every need of yours and that he will protect you and care for you. Revenge belongs to God alone. Romans chapter 12, verse 19 says, Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath because it is written, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. I will repay, says the Lord. Verse 20. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you will be reaping fiery coals on his head. Completely counterculture. The way of Jesus. If your enemy's hungry, feed him. Thirsty, give him a drink. Bless them. Verse 21 Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Again, the enemy would love to walk you back into that prison that you have been set free from. That place where you were bound to sin and to self. That place where you were consumed with yourself and had very little thoughts of others. That place where you spent more time plotting and planning the demise of others rather than cheering them on to succeed and blessing them. As we close, I want to encourage us today to hold on to our biblical convictions. We see in verse 21, do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. How do we know what's good? We discover it right here in this word that is before us that we have the access to. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Meekness is not compromising your biblical convictions. Hold on to those convictions. Hold on to the authority that is the word of, of God. See, the world belongs to uh, the rich, the dominant, and the bold. That's, 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 that's his myth. And what does Jesus do? He flips it. He flips it. 
And he declares that true inheritors of the earth are the meek. The meek. Meekness whispers through its tears, God, I trust you. I know you are holy. I know you are righteous. I know you are just. I accept everything that comes into my, li into my life without murmuring, without disputing, without retaliation. God, I trust you. Would you bow your heads and would you close your eyes all across this place? Those that are online with us, would you do the same? I wonder, what is your response from this today? What is your response from the word of God today? Which area might you be struggling in that before we leave this place, we would come to full surrender, full surrender over to him. Full surrender over to him. Is there any part that you're holding on to? Is there someone that has hurt you that right here, right now, you need to release to the Lord? Say, God, would you bring the healing where I've been hurt? Would you make right where I've been wronged? Father, I'm walking around with not so much joy, but today I want to walk in joy. I want to rejoice always. I haven't been content. There's not much gratitude, but today I want to practice gratitude. Thank you, God, for how you have blessed me, the many gifts that you've given me. I don't know what your response is today in the house and online. Would you get alone with God right here, right now? In a moment, we're going to take communion. We're going to pause and remember the great sacrifice of our Savior as a church. Before we do that, would you just surrender it, whatever it is, surrender it over to him. Maybe there's someone that's on your mind and in your heart right now that as we're talking about retaliation and hurt. Right here, right now, surrender that person. Surrender that person over to the Lord. As people are praying all across this place and online, maybe there's someone here that's never surrendered over to the Lord Jesus. Receive the gift of salvation that is free and it's available. The Bible says whoever confesses that Jesus is Lord will be saved. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. What we earn and deserve because of our sin is separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hear me clearly today. The salvation is available. And if that's you in the house online, if that's you. Holy Spirit of God is tugging on your heart. Repent. Be safe today. Would you say something? Something like this, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I am a sinner. You are the Savior. I trust you completely. I trust you completely. Save me, forgive me of all my sins. I believe that you died on a cross. You were placed in a grave and you rose victorious. And I ran out of that. I ran out of that grave. Today, I trust you with my life. I want to live the rest of my life for you, for your glory. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you now for this time that, that we reflect and we remember your great sacrifice through these elements. Thank you, Father, for your church and those that, that are surrendering whatever it is over to you, trusting you striving to grow in meekness. Help us, Lord God. We ask this in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.